good evening everyone and welcome to the today's session of uh, saturday talk we are privileged to have dr narendra dokeji as our today's uh, speaker and he's going to deliver a session on overview on energy materials uh, please give a moment to introduce uh, dr dokeji dr n b doke has completed his mtech from iit bombay and phd from vnit nagpur he spent his initial 6 years in steel plant and then moved to teaching and research he is presently as i said is a professor in metrology and material science department coep technological university of pune he is a former head of department of metrology and material science he teaches to btech and mtech students subjects such as transfer phenomena metrological thermodynamics steel making tribology of materials energy materials and powder metrology and he is the approved supervisor of university of pune for guiding phd students he has completed sponsored projects from isro ugc drdo joint dairy india dst and brns besides he has executed consultancy assignments from several industries he has established state of the art powder metallurgy tribology and cryogenic treatment material processing lab dr doke published several papers in international and national journals and few patents to its credit he is honored by iim certificate of excellence in the year 2011 for his distinguished services in the overall growth of iim pune chapter he is a life member and vice president of pmai iim mrsi he was co convener of nmd 2014 organized at coep and organize events for the industry industry re re relevance sorry so sir uh, it's over to you now uh, yeah. good luck to you listen to you yeah uh, thank you uh, rajesh for the nice introduction uh, uh, in fact uh, 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 so so the, uh, let me uh, switch off the video uh, before i start you know that would be better because the internet connectivity will be yes sir. okay so right. so so thank you uh, very much uh, mr rajesh for you know uh, a nice introductions and uh, thank you janutech uh, mr harish patak as well you know for inviting me and it's a honor for me to deliver a talk uh, in such a uh, you know, uh, uh, gathering uh, uh, having a, di a diverse background so it will be always a learning to me as well uh, so while interacting with you all people so the uh, overall uh, it will be uh, the my talk is you know uh, on energy material it's a a summary of what time uh, you know teaching to the students you know uh uh it's like a semester course we introduced this year and uh, there are no books so i'm taking every you know material from different this and that book and trying to consolidate so i'm just trying to present and and just to bring you some excitement in the energy materials uh it will be interesting to i hope it is with this interesting to all of you uh and uh, we may have some discussion at the end so while discussing on this energy materials we always keep this concept in mind well while you know executing some of the uh, research projects so the environment society and economics into account so finally the sustainability of any process is very very important in today's world okay so uh, why this uh, topic is so important am audible to you all hello yes sir, yes, sir. Okay. audible so why this topic yes, is, uh, yeah why this topic is so important because when you look at the what uh, world is doing with its uh, energy material you will find some you know relevance and references on uh, top uh, you know you can you can say the emerging technologies of 2020 you'll find you'll find that sun power chemistry low carbon uh, cement and then you have a Uh, green hydrogen so so at least uh, 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 when you look at this you know the uh, relevance of this topic so it has some importance in the world you know if uh, you know emerging technologies so so that is why you know this is catching up the attentions of the uh, learner and researcher so if you look at even the uh, us document you know the emerging technologies you will find the relevance of you know these energies advanced nuclear energy technologies and then directed energy which is something related to laser weapon and all and then you will see the renewable energy generation and storage semiconductors and 
microelectronics. So, semi, uh, so uh, these are all you know the rela uh, topic of relevance in terms of the energy is concerned, and we find energy usage in different forms. So, it is not moving. Yeah, and uh, just yeah, and uh, uh, when you look at our government policies, you know the today's government policies which are in, available in the public domain. And this is Atman Nirbhar Bharat. And if you look at the content, you'll find uh, that these are all the relevant disciplines uh, of research. And one of them is electronics. Uh, and of course, some materials of you know energy would definitely be in application in different segments. So, so here is you know the scope to work upon. And then the hydrogen economy the, uh, policy document of the government is also available, where it also mentions that how do we storage? What should be the storage? Or the hydrogen, not in the liquid form, but if it is for the onboard application, it should be in the hydrate form. So there is a different class of alloys that comes up as hydrogen storage alloys, and then you will also find in the in the past uh, some uh, you know the uh, how this chip shortage is making life you know uh, difficult. Uh, so we also realize the importance of chip, which is definitely you know the semiconducting materials. Uh, and also in the news, you find some relevance of the battery, how the government is supporting the energy in different in different ways to uh, you know uh, you know to make it uh, you know self reliance in particular sector. And uh, recent past, you know, the uh, government has also issued you know the uh, document uh, on the semiconductor. So you'll find that you know the a lot of relevance is given to this energy materials, which is used in different segments. You know, in the quality of life. Now, while doing so, it also realizes that you know this we need to uh, when you are developing certain material or process, we need, uh, we need to look at you know the uh, circular economy. So this is the current uh, uh, linear economy: take, make, and dispose of. And this is the circular economy. So we should have the more recyclability in the, into the system, and uh, the of, of course the uh, uh, reduced carbon footprint. That's a uh, you know very important part of this uh, in energy materials or any pro process for that matter. Now, if you look at the energy, we use you know different form of energy. Say for example, uh, this is very uh, common to all of us. This chemical energy. We use batteries. It's a process of oxidation and reduction, and that's how we produce energy. So likewise, uh, we use different, you know, gadgets, equipment, wherein we use, uh, we we convert one form of energy to other form of energy. Like heat energy, we, uh, you know, IC engine, we burn fuel and we produce some, you know, the motion to the system. So likewise, you'll find that we all use different forms of energy in our day-to-day -day life in running different systems and uh, to make uh, to make our life, you know, uh, you know, happy and comfortable. Now, if you look at the world energy scenario on, on consumption, you know, so uh, this is a scale up and uh, the very relevant document up to 2040. So you can uh, see that here the nuclear energy growth rate would be not so not so would be dramatic, but uh, the renewable uh, segment will catch up. And of course, uh, here is you'll find that you know uh, the uh, uh, the coal. Petroleum and other liquids, you know, these are all carbonaceous. You know, the uh, uh, you, can, you can say the input material as fuel, and that is going to add to the carbon footprint. So there is, uh, it shows that you know we have a lot of scope for here to uh, you know replace these uh, carbonaceous fossil fuels by some means of renewable energy. So and for which you need uh, need to develop uh, new materials and. Uh, Need to work on, on the research fund, and this uh, definitely gives you a scope uh, to uh, to work on different strategy for uh, generating the energy. Now, the very important one is now today is the hydrogen. So we talk about you know the uh, green hydrogens and then grey hydrogen, and there are different forms of energy from which the hydrogen is produced. The green hydrogen is typically we look at uh, where you are you know. Trying to get the energy from the wind, and then you can have this electrolyzer through which you are splitting the water and producing hydrogen. So this is how it is defined as a green uh, hydrogen. Now, if you say that you know the uh, fossil fuel or the hydrocarbon gas, also we can split it and produce hydrogen. So this is treated as a grey hydrogen, 
and there is another category where you precipitate out carbon and only produce hydrogen so it is called as blue hydrogen and if you are producing producing hydrogen through the nuclear energy process so it is called as pink hydrogen so there are many definitions that are coming up in the market so it will be interesting to uh, look at those definitions and uh, uh, this photovoltaic cell you know when you are coupling this electrolyzer with the photovoltaic cells then you are truly uh, you know producing the green hydrogen so this how the uh, the definition of green hydrogen has been you know uh, uh, you know uh, defined in the documents and uh, and here is you know the car carbon footprint in the whole uh, process directly it is not seen here maybe uh, there could be some indirect uh, you know addition of carbon footprint while manufacturing uh, these are some of the uh, you know the uh, devices components for this photovoltaic or wind energy so but this is how the how the present definitions of the green hydrogen and there are a lot of application of green hydrogen for you know the material processing and for running the fuel cells so we'll see that one by one uh, from the material point of view now there is a you know uh, you know very public document in the uh, public domain by mckinsey so if you look at you know the uh, how this uh, uh, at present and uh, by 2020-50 the cost of green hydrogen will come down as we give more emphasis on the renewable energy so it will come down and the fossil fuel cost which by which we produce the gray hydrogen it will go up so this is how the uh, it's a based on some assumption the strategy has been you know proposed that you know the uh, we may use more green hydrogen in new applications and replacing the carbon based economy by the hydrogen based you know the processes so as we uh, as uh, we know that you know for producing 1 ton of steel uh, it require it produces 1.85 tons of co2 which is uh, 8% of the global co2 emission so this is very important you know from the uh, you know, uh, pollution point of view or carbon footprint of uh, footprint point of view so i think uh, uh, a lot of you know work we need to do it uh, for next 10 20 years and there are different documents which are available in the uh, public domain particularly in the context of you know the uh, uh, the energy now this right hand chart if you see here you will see that you know uh, this is up to 2050 now the steel is produced nowadays by the blast furnace and basic coffee process or by electric process so this yellow part you will see this is uh, the scrap plus electric furnace you know the uh, processes that are used but as we uh, move towards 2050 you'll find that more scrap recycling to the electric car furnace will be done and less amount of steel would be produced by the blast furnace you know and blast furnace typically consume uh, carbon uh, carbonaceous material like coke uh, for the production of steel so this is what a projection that has been you know uh, seen in the published document and is a wonderful model has been created here the three e's economy uh, energy and emissions and they are all interconnected how it is interconnected with technology it's also shown here so it is a very interesting document to look at and understand what will be the future uh, in terms of energy and uh, energy materials and the applications to make uh, to reduce the finally the carbon footprint and make a uh, uh, planet green on on the basis of you know this hydrogen if you just look at the projections you know so so we are aware that you know or the steel product uh, steel making roots emits a lot of carbon dioxide and if you just look at this particular this uh, uh, you know this program uh, uh, on the uh, co2 reduction uh, you know this is what proposed in the paris agreement by 2050 we should be this level from 2800 to 400 Uh, 400 to 600 you know uh, the uh, you know the uh, production a million tons of co2 that would be put to the environment so these are the projections which has been put up by the uh, paris agreement now if you look at the global steel demand that will go up okay so naturally uh, you need to make a, a very uh, common operating window so if you look at uh, this uh, the overall summary you know if you divide this million tons of co2 by this how much million tons of steel that you have produced 
so you get a, this particular graph so it is expected that by 2050 we may able to reduce by uh, 90% this co2 emission so if you work simultaneously on the renewable energy sources and uh, and if you find if you could able to you know uh, produce hydrogen in a very economical way using the electrolyzer and coupling with the uh, you know the renewable sources so you can make a green hydrogen and that's what the strategy it has been you know proposed here so it uh, we may able to do it by by 2050 now the uh, in the uh, particular in this steel stage segment so this is in fact the scenario here uh, uh, that you no know, the steel is produced by use, use of coal oil natural gas uh, and and of course it emits uh, a lot of co2 uh, into the environment now the the middle one is you know the uh, this is a direct reduced ion and electro, uh, electric electric furnace route wherein you can use some natural gas for the production of iron ore so this is in fact we call it as improved uh, you know way of making a steel but we need to go little more further you know where you can avoid the natural gas make use of the hydrogen and that too through the water electrolyzer and how this uh, uh, where from this water electrolyzer will get energy it will be obtained from the solar or in renewable sources so if you put make a circuit like this then it will be truly a green steel and this would take you know some few years next Uh, uh you know to uh, to get this you know picture on a commercial level so it is a, uh, so you can say that there are simultaneous work is happening in the all these tiers in fact at a laboratory scale we could able to produce a green steel in our college uh, uh, uh in our college laboratory but uh, you know we will have to uh, go a little more scale up and make a prototype at a, at a later stage now on the fuel cells uh, uh, if you see that now we are very much get you know fascinated as a result when the news comes that the car is running on the fuel cells now if you look at here is you know the uh, fuel cells uh, here is a uh, place uh, the uh, battery and then uh, uh, fuel cells you know the entire system here and then you get a hydrogen uh, from this tank so liquid hydrogen but you know this liquid hydrogen handling is not allowed in fact uh, or it is prohibited Uh, so it is uh, suggested that for any on board application we must have hydrogen in the form of hydride and uh, this hydride you know it's a uh, 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 you know the material based you can have say titanium ion hydride or say aluminum hydride and on heating uh, it will uh, release the hydrogen and when you are refueling it hydrogen will get absorbed so something this is called as you know the hydrides so once uh, we get a hydrides you know then things would be quite you know safe to uh, use for on board application for off board absolutely uh, fine you know you can use a liquid uh, hydrogen for running the fuel cells but for on board application this is what is suggested and uh, on uh, because of this recent past you find some you know the uh, publication domain there are different hydrogen storage alloys are coming up now if you look at for, to run a fuel cell of 55 kW this titanium hydride uh, you know the uh, metal hydride is you know people have produced and it is uh, says that you know for the weight of this metal hydride requires is about 280 kg and in which uh, it stores about 5 kg of hydrogen so the, uh, so this how the uh, some experimentation research work is happening all across the globe and there are different combinations of the alloys uh, if you look at this lanthanum nickel lanthanum nickel aluminum magnesium nickel magnesium uh, is in, fact, in fact it has a good affinity with the hydrogen so so these are all the applications for the alloys that are available in the market to run some uh, small fuel cell laboratory scale fuel cell but uh, at the same time you know people are very ambitious in fact in the research domain uh, they have uh, marked a window here okay so this is what you know the target to achieve this uh, you know to manufacture this uh, particularly the hydrogen storage alloys amongst all these alloys you will find only this is commercially available sodium boron hydride uh, somewhere i had an opportunity to see this uh, this particular hydride alloy but others are under the development uh, and there are a lot of challenges also there in the development of hydrogen storage alloys and these are all the required for the on board applications to have the vehicle safe you know easy to handle 
and uh, you know less uh, hazardous you know so these are all the things which are behind this and therefore this lot of work is you know you see in the public domain and this uh, uh, the histogram provides uh, uh, the uh, uh, the hydrogen storage capacity now uh, if you uh, look at this particularly this uh, chart you will see that uh, 350 bar hydrogen you know uh, cylinder we can store 23 kg uh, of you know the hydrogen now there are some you know this is liquid hydrogen here you can store 70 kg and uh, for dual cylinder and then there is a lot of other mala other other alloys sodium aluminum hydride uh, and uh, uh, nitrogen this is ammonia which which is very commonly used in many uh, uh, material processing industries like powder metallurgy industries you can crack this ammonia in fact for the heat treatment also this you can crack the ammonia you can separate out you can use the hydrogens and nitrogen will go leave uh, the system so likewise uh, the storage capacity depending upon the compound and the uh, compositions it is varies varying and uh, this is what is available commercially uh, a bit costly sodium boron hydride and it has a very high capacity and uh, beyond, beyond that uh, the aluminum hydride has need more capacity to hold the hydrogen so this would come up as one of the you know the hydrogen storage you know the uh, system to run some such uh, on board system where the you would like to run fuel cell so for fuel cell running you require a hydrogen uh, to make it a uh, vehicle green and this hydrogen can be supplied by this uh, uh, you know the metal hydrides which are rechargeable you can uh, you can uh, you know dissociate the hydrides and you can you know after the consumption of hydrogen you can charge it you know by you know supplying the uh, hydrogen uh, which is you know produced by the renewable and electrolyzer sources so there are uh, apparently there are three categories that are you know uh, studied uh, being studied in the, pub, uh, in the public domain now these are challenges i think uh, uh, they uh, requires to be you know addressed particularly the when you are uh, you know hydro hydrogenizing dragging the alloy so a lot of heat is generated uh, 33 kg so and uh, you know while doing so uh, we need to extract the heat so it requires a proper balancing you know the cooling and heating so here is you know the uh, the trick and the uh, and and the expertise is required here and while doing so the entropy of the system also goes up so entropy of the system is the overall the entropy of the the uh, charging system goes up so you need to control it you know it has to be under control so you need to design a cooling system so that you can safely charge and recharge by hydrogen and uh, while doing so the real problem arises when you consider rapid cooling rates okay so so the Uh, you know this is very important you know uh, that you know when you are charging a metal hydride if you could charge in a short time it's always welcome before if, it, if you are taking a, a half day or whole day so th that's not required or that's not a uh, you know attractive proposal to the common uh, you know uh, uh, users so therefore uh, we need to work on how fast we can charge it charge it. so the ethyl megajoule of heat generated during refueling will get to be dissipated at the rate of 0.5 megawatt which is extremely challenging engineering problem that is not likely to be solved by moderate improvement in heat exchangers okay so these are all the challenges uh, associated with the metal metal hydride development and if you look at the government policy which is available in the public domain it, it has a mention of the metal hydrides and i think it was released in 2005 Uh, and it has uh, many national labs have worked on, but a real product is yet to come. Now beyond this, you know, uh, there are a lot of scope for the, you know, extracting, harvesting the heat from the waste. Uh, now, if you look at the whole, uh, you know, the uh, engineering, wherever the heat is produced, you will find that you know the 34 percent of the energy is used for the applications. Whereas the 66 percent of energy is lost, typically the thermal power, nuclear power, automobile waste incinerator, factory glass making, aluminium industries, and so on. So this is uh, really of concern to us, and therefore, you know, there is a way to you know extract the heat out of this, you know, or harvest the heat out of this for the energy production is using the thermoelectric material. Okay. 
topic. So this uh, this is also again a, a topic of very uh, you know uh, priority you can say. And uh, like for example, uh, if I could uh, you know mention here uh, a case like you know the in uh, hot rolling slab. So the hot rolling slabs when it comes out of the rolling mill, it, it, the temperature is certainly about 900 degrees Celsius, red hot. So a lot of heat energy which gets radiated and it lost into the environment. So what if what it can be done, you know, you can have an arc here and you know, all those <coughs> semiconductor modules can be fitted in this manner. So you can, you know, uh, receive this heat from this source and then you can convert this into electricity. So this is what is, is, the, is the model wherein you can have the P-type semiconductor, N-type semiconductor and uh, definitely you can uh, make use of this concept of Seebeck effect in converting the waste heat into the electricity. So this is so called as thermoelectric you know, generator. Now, uh, in the research domain, you'll also find people are using different softwares, you know, before uh, just to cut down their, you know, development time. And these softwares are available. It takes into account different, you know, the, uh, you know, the uh, physics, material science into account. And that's how this CalFAT software is being used uh, by one of the researchers to design the alloys, to design the thermoelectric generator or semiconductor alloys through this uh, you know, the uh, Calfide uh, simulation software, and it's available uh, in, as, a, as a brand name Thermocal software. So, they sell this particular uh, software. So, so if you look at the overall market here, the global thermal generator, mar generator market, so it's from 2018 to 2026, 26, so it is going to grow. So, one thing you have to design and uh, you know, develop new alloys. Uh, and uh, demonstrate uh, about its capacity and you know so there is definitely market to uh, you know extract the or harvest the heat from this waste so if you look at from the 1950s to till dates you will find the journey of these materials you know which is you know on this thermoelectric uh, development you find that this is how the path is being followed here and now we are, we are here that we find that this is what is going to uh, you know do better when compared to the previous uh, development but you know in the market still today the bismuth telluride, telluride is commonly used in fact you know if you my uh, you know it's available in the market you know bismuth telluride uh, the modules small modules for uh, as a you can use you can utilize it as a for the seaback as well as the pelshire effect so in one of my research projects my students are using this modules for you know for the hybrid energy generator now uh, how do we know that what development is happening uh, across the globe you can always view through this uh, a number of publications in the recent past you will see this is that up to 2014 you will find that a lot of you know the publication has happened in this particular thermoelectric uh, material development and uh, the uh, the type of elements which are of you know people are searching or you know developing or trying to develop it alloy uh, or the thermoelectric materials or semiconductor will find the more usage of you know the indium silver telluride titanium cadmium so so because there is we also look at you know the uh, it should be eco friendly material now the last slide you can see here to the corner these slides you will find that uh, on the silver tin and titanium you will see that they are safety they are safe to use it uh, but otherwise, uh, other materials, you know, if you see, that has a green greenhouse effect on the, uh, in the in the environment. And then there are some elements which are really prone to cancer. You know, telluride. Uh, telluride. Of course, we use lead batteries, but always the care we take. But you know, uh, these are all the they can uh, promote the cancer, carcinogenic uh, kind of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, effect to the human body. On as far as the abundance, you know, when you are developing, we should also see that whether this material is available abundantly. So titanium is available, sulfur, copper. So these are all talks about the availability that there is a definite abundance, uh, you know, availability of these materials. So all these factors we need to take into consideration while designing the uh, thermoelectric material. And thermoelectric material is typically a semiconductor. 
and in semiconductor there are two categories one is a low temperature semiconductor like this material or is a low technical low temperature semiconductor and uh, other is like iron disulfide is a high temperature semiconductor which can even go up to 900 degrees celsius but you know the whole problem you know in this semiconductor is the efficiency the figure of merit is low and therefore people are researching how to increase the figure of merit so that uh, it will be a good uh, it will be efficient uh, thermo electric generator so so this is what is is a very uh, hitting area in this research domain on you know, on physics part of it the heat transfer point of view so here is you know you can have this is uh, different semiconducting phases you can paste it uh, paste it uh, uh, you can stack it rather and this is the fourier law that you can definitely employ that how much heat is conducted from the uh, heat source to the heat sink so this is simple uh, conduction formula that it is used uh, and uh, uh, for making a p type you need to dope with certain elements for n type so this is cobalt based uh, is the uh, you know uh, is added here to make it a p n type so likewise some dopant you need to add it and you have to look at the band gap and the figure of merit is the you know higher the figure of merit the better is the performance in terms of the uh, energy generation. And there are some limitations mm -hmm. to what extent the particular modules can be used. So the temperature limit is also given. So these are all the alloys, you know, which are, you know, different combinations of chromium, silicide. It can be mostly they are manufactured by powder metallurgy group, okay, because there you can have good control on the compositions and the selective, you know, the treatment can be given to form a particular phase and you may have to look at the phase diagram as well for that competition that what should be the my uh, centering temperature so these are the things which are available you know uh, in the research domain for the uh, uh, you know the, for the research and the seaback effect you know uh, most of you might have used this uh, you know the uh, uh, thermocouple so thermocouple works on seaback effect so we when you put uh, thermocouple in furnace so the heat energy is converted into electrical energy similarly peltire effect wherein uh, again uh, cold junction hot junction wherein you supply the electrical energy and then it converts into heat and, uh, and uh, heat energy on the other side and cold on the other side you know so this is a peltire effect is also you know uh, you know very commonly used and it is expected that you know if you see here very catchy uh, uh, you know statement no moving parts the requirement of maintaining maintenance frequency is less or payment hydrofluorocarbons uh, cfc's temperature control can be maintained within a fraction of degree and uh, we you can treat this something like you know your air conditioner uh, so with that comparison you know so this has been you know proposed that you know this would turn out to be a, you know uh, air conditioner on one side it is getting cold and other side it's hot so so I think uh, this is also catching the attention uh, of the research community on the, you know, uh, to use this peltire effect. And how this pressure can be converted into energy. So the convert uh, mechanical strain to electric current produces power on the order of milliwatt. Useful for a small application like handheld devices like bulbs. And uh, you can have different mats, you know, where you can convert this, you know, vibrations, human vibrations. Uh, acoustic noise and pressure into this energy and these are all the materials which are presently being studied and people have uh, uh, able to make some final products out of this and uh, which are available in the market uh, out of this uh, these are all some of the examples where you can definitely uh, think of you know converting this you know making use of these electric materials to generate energy uh, the power generating sidewalk and then mobile keypads. You know, we continuously use this mobile. So this pressing button can also help you to get energy, which is it can help you to recharge your more or uh, your mobile. So another is you know this uh, power generating boots or shoes for the you know it was designed for the military American military. Uh, you know, so these are uh, there are so many applications. You know, not only this, there are very few. Uh, uh, examples which I illustrated here, but there are many applications you could see in the market. 
on the front uh, batteries you know which is also very catching attention now if you look at this lithium battery so here is lithium metal oxide here and you will see uh, this is a cathode on the other side you will see the anode where lithium plus carbon graphite is you know, mixed together to make the anode so the whole uh, assembly you know you find that you know the uh, requires uh, the combination of metal and uh, uh, and oxide uh, and where the anode and cathode decides the you know the success of this battery so 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 the uh, there is another option available the iron iron is also can be used as a battery material and uh, at least commercially not available people are you know researching on this front you know uh, this iron can be uh, one day it will come out as battery and battery to replace lithium and here is another you know option you know the <laughs> research community has given uh, or in fact it is well investigated that how this battery can be charged using the solar so it's possible so you have to connect uh, renewable with this battery to make it you know uh, to save energy and make it green or reduce the carbon footprint you know while charging such batteries and this is you know the graphene based batteries you know uh, uh, people are uh, you know are trying to you know develop you know and there are some examples in the public domain i don't know the commercial applications but these are all the concepts which are well proven at the laboratory scale only the scale up uh, that would decide the success you know in the market now the another very commonly used material is the manganese which is considered as a forgotten um, battery material and here is a very catchy statement you know the euro manganese note that manganese is an essential element in the manufacturing of cathode technology you can go for as uh, uh, for as to dub the element as forgotten battery material high purity manganese stabilizes nickel in modern lithium ion ev batteries at lower cost than competitor material these are all the a company you know lg works at tesla and panasonic are currently developing magnesium inclusive product designs and by 2030 the magnesium experts the management expect that 60% of all ev batteries produced will require high purity magnesium in fact this you know the uh, youtube is you know from the tesla there they are mentioned very emphasized on uh, on very much on this uh, magnesium battery so uh, if time permits we can run at the end i don't know whether i am able to finish in within a given time slots but if you have time then we can definitely run but it will take 5 minutes to get the complete glimpses glimpses on this magnesium battery on the soft magnetic materials front so here is in the pune there is a good development where the uh, in fact uh, it's a, the first uh, company in the india to develop a nano crystalline ribbon so when you are comparing this uh, uh, cold rolled non grain oriented silicon steel there are we know uh, uh, that these are all used in the uh, transformer ma manufacturing however this amorphous ribbon which the thickness as go as as low as you know the 20 micron and it is being produced in pune uh, and uh, and uh, the uh the, the, uh and it is a very outstanding property in terms of the energy uh, you know saving so it is being manufactured at vikas nanotechnology pune uh somewhere in shiva shiva so 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 i got a data from them that you know and he's a very close friend of mine <laughs> and is a you know diploma in electrical uh, in, uh, engineering but uh, he he could able to do it uh, very uh, outstanding in fact the president awardi Uh, for you know commercializing this particular concept of rapid solidification and to make a very efficient product and uh, they provided us you know that you know crgo cr ngos if you use this steel and uh, and uh, this is cold rolled grain oriented uh, you know steel for the electro, uh, uh, transformer manufacturing you will see that how, how much the uh, energy which is which goes best for the 40 kg it is a least here uh, at least moderate here and on the nano scale it is a least so this is what the beauty of this particular you know the uh, uh, ribbon uh, which is about 20 micron and you can make uh, uh, transformers core out of this and it is highly efficient in fact the size of the transformer will uh, you know it has come down many times uh, you know for many of the applications so 
very uh, you know fantastic development in this particular segment by this particular vikas nanotechnology so we uh, just to uh, add little more on this we also uh, you know did some work on the soft magnetic materials it got published in american journal from evaluation of magnetic properties of ceramic coated soft magnetic composite and stimulation for microwave devices now this is a setup that we designed you know we, we also filed a patent on this so here we can, uh, you know core time powders of say 100 micron by ceramic like mgo and this is the xrd graph and these are all the properties you know which are usually uh, studied for this micro devices and this is a small piece of work which we published recent past on the microwaves you know the what uh, normally we talk in terms of the wavelength 1 mm to 1 meter and frequency 0.3 to 300 gigahertz and and they require the consists of magnetic and electric fields microwave frequencies are used for satellite communications radar and multi applications now here is you know the uh, different components of uh, you know used here like circulator isolator and there are so many phase shifters electromagnetic interference in all uh, material you'll find some use of permanent magnet or ferrites uh, for converting or making it efficient for such applications you know because finally we require this uh, communication system where you can receive the maximum signals good quality signals so you need to have a material which will convert the signal into uh, the useful uh, part of it for communication purpose so this is uh, this is again uh, you know the area where you require materials with uh, you know the relevant uh, uh, rare earth materials for the development of this and uh, on small front you know the metals can also be used for the energy applications now if you look at the whole scenario of coal based thermal power stations almost occupies 50% of the energy that we consume and the rest is you know comes from the gas diesel you know hydro wheat and nuclear and very little amount of nuclear energy on application wide consumption wise you will see the 40% are being consumed by these industries and rest is the by application here and why we so concerned about that you know this is the recent uh, you know it has published in the it has come in the newspaper that how this uh, the carbon emissions or the pollution that uh, caused by this thermal power plant you know uh, uh, affects the ecology and the human health so this was a good survey it has come in it had it had been the particular uh, times news so that is why i have tested here so considering this aspect into account that how do we reduce the coal consumption how do we uh, generate energy so as a as a curiosity you know at our level you know we started with a small project on for the bitech and if you could look at the uh, the enthalpy enthalpy of these reactions now this carbon is coal you will see that how much you produce minus 393 kJ per mole and if you burn iron powder how much you produce minus 412 so almost same or you can say slightly more and if you use hydrogen as a fuel you produce minus 285 enthalpy of the reaction so so it means that the exothermicity is more involved with the iron oxidation so we uh, we thought of you know why not burn iron powder so so we also saw some published literature that uh, which metal could give the energy density uh, uh, energy density this is kilowatt hour per liter volume wise and this is specific energy density kilowatt per kg so you'll find that you know our traditional materials like coal is here gasoline is here diesel is here biomass is here hydrogen is here and here is iron so on the on this front you know you'll find energy density is very good and the specific energy uh, although it's less but you know uh, it's manageable because uh, it's a very close proximity and of course the even if the energy density is less but you know the, there is no uh, uh, pollution deterioration so so that way i think we can looked at such a, you know element as energy materials aluminum could be one of the energy materials silicon could be one of the energy materials you know so whatever the exothermicity or the, whatever the exothermic reaction that it you know uh, produce will that energy can be very well utilized for this purpose so this is what a schematic you know diagram uh, i'm showing it here you know where we fabricated a you know burner and this is what the flame this is actual you know photograph of the burner so here we need to do it 
more on this designing of the burners for further successful prototypes. So aluminum is also studied by someone, you know, can also act as a good energy materials. Uh, and of course, it is used for rocket and so many application. In fact, in fire packer also use aluminum. But why not for our own consumptions, aluminum to replace the carbon and uh, use the waste of the aluminum as aluminum oxide back to the to hair a lot process to aluminum. So, so the particle size also has impact. The smaller the particle size, you can ignite at a very at a very low a low temperature. Uh, the temperature of the ignition would be less if the particle size is less. So, likewise, uh, you know the uh, the surface area, the surface area of the particle also makes some uh, sense in the, the rate of ignitions. Okay. Now, on the front, uh, the rear earth elements for the electronic devices, uh, you'll, you'll see that so many applications of rare earth metals are used to electronics, catalyst, and magnets, metal alloys, ceramics, glasses, so full of uh, the gadgets that we use in our day-to-day -day life, you'll find a lot of application of the rare earth metals in, in uh, to uh, for the smoothening of the uh, our own uh, uh, life. Uh, uh, now the Pi-Z spectrum is very much you know uh, 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 we are talking about. So if you look at the how this Pi-Z spectrum communication system is made, these are all the devices which are uh, in place and how these devices are made. Some part of the rare earth metals is used in in enhancing the performance of these devices and what function they do they laser and fiber optic cables, somewhere the magnets, uh, uh, magnets, batteries. So these are all the, uh, the uh, you know, the applications and used in these are the, uh, uh, you know, the materials. Uh, this particular rare earth metal is used. And uh, this makes the, uh, you know, the performance much stronger. So, so, so this is the last slide I, I, I can consider. These are all the past events that we organize in connection with the energy materials. So, so let me thank you to Mr. Harish Patak and team. You know, I think I have crossed the limits, I, I believe. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Professor. Uh, interesting topic. Uh, we have Abhimanyu Raja, who is our you know, founder, director of our company. Yeah. I'll request him to introduce other uh, senior people in the, uh, in the, in the group who are, uh, who are the audience here today. Yeah. Sir, Namaste, sir. Thank you for accepting our uh, invitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, it is uh, so interesting. You have been mentioning our elements as energy material. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a totally a new subject, actually. I was immediately thinking about the uh, uh, MOIL, Magnus Over India Limited, whether then it is going to be an expensive company soon. Is it like that? <laughs> <laughs> they are selling it as an additive uh, for some, as a catalyst or something like that or an alloy minimum percentage delay. but if it is going to be used for uh, purposes you have been mentioning then I think uh, all the sparingly used uh, elements will become very uh, most sought after elements soon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.